So this lesson is going to be very different from the other ones that we've done so far. Um, it's kind of like it's a, it's a bit of a break from everything else. Maybe that's a good thing. Um, it is very specific. Um, it is not something you could figure out yourself. It's, it's kind of tricky. Um, it's not particularly hard, I don't think, in the end. Once you've done a couple again, it's really you know, just a step-by-step -step process. And uh, it's not something we're gonna do a lot of in the course. We do it this one day. It will be on probably the quiz that we'll have um, in a few days. We'll talk about that after. Um, and then that'll kind of be it. <laughs> but you know, it, it, it sometimes can be kind of a long question, so worth a bunch of marks. So it's, it's worth figuring out to get those marks kind of thing. So. It is using finite differences, and we're going to come up with the equations of polynomial functions from finite differences. So for each of the following, it says, uh, determine the degree of uh, the following using finite differences, and then determine the equation of the polynomial function. Okay? So we're coming up with an equation just from a list of points. This might be interesting to, um, to realize that we can do this just because you could program a computer to do it, right? So you could punch some data into a computer and the computer could just generate the equation for you. There are other ways of doing that. People do that in statistics all the time, not using this process. But um, you know, if, if you have a perfect relationship, you could program a computer to do this. Anyway, remember what f finite differences is? In grade nine, you might've just called it first differences. And in grade 10, if you do it, you would do first differences and second differences. Anybody remember that? Doesn't sound familiar at all? Interesting. Um, so it is something you would have done, I'm sure. Maybe, maybe you didn't really think about the name of it, but it's just the process. So finite differences is just all of them, because you can do first, second, third, fourth, fifth. You can kind of go on as long as you want. That's why it's called finite differences. Um, so anyway, let's get started. And all it is, is you're looking at the change between two points. So from five to two, What's the change? Three in like what direction? Yeah, so down three is negative three. Or you always do the one on the bottom minus the one on top. These numbers are small and what I like to call friendly numbers. So we can just do it in our head. We can just think about the change. From five to two is down three. From two to negative one is down three again. So minus three. And from negative one to negative four is down three again. But if I did the subtraction for each of those, I would be subtracting up like that, two minus five, negative one minus two. Negative one minus two is negative three, yes? Negative four minus negative one is negative four plus one, which is negative three again, yes? Yep, see? So you, are all, you have to do it that direction. You can't do it the other direction. And sometimes the numbers will be quite large and you will have to use your calculator. So be careful of that. What can we conclude? Or what do you notice about the first differences? Yeah, they're all the same. The first differences are all the same. In other words, the pattern is going down by the same amount every time. And notice that the x's are also changing by the same amount every time. Okay? And what we can conclude from that is that this function is linear. It's degree one. So since first differences are all the same. This function is linear. The word function is a special word. So we 
we do want to only use it when we're talking about functions. Otherwise, we would call it a relation. Um, but we're doing polynomial functions because the first differences are all the same. I know that this is a linear polynomial function. Like, so, so I am allowed to use that word. Um, there are kind of times, possibly in this course or in calculus, where we're sort of looking at something that's not a function. We need to just be a bit mindful of that. Um, but normally, what we, it's advanced functions, so what we deal with is functions, so it's fine. What else can we do here? If we need, so we're done the first part, determine the degree, right? Degree one. Determine the equation, how do I do that? You actually did this in grade nine, so this is something that you've done before. Mm -hmm. Sub in what? Like any of the points on the left. Sub it into what? Um, can we use the equation we used for like the original? Uh, oh. Because we have, yeah, you could do that. Because we, we have the x-intercept. So we could write the family of functions. That would work. That's not what we're going to do, but that's a really nice insight. We could do that. We could also do it the old grade nine way, where we find we we like take two points and like you did that algebraically. Find it, but again, that's not what we're going to do. What ha, what is what is important about the uh, equation of a linear function, a, a degree one or a straight line? Like, what do you remember about that from grade nine? Y equals mx plus b. So if we can get the slope and we can get the y-intercept, we can write the equation. Can we do that? Anybody know what any of those things are in this relation? Yeah, but it's not just, it's not just y over x. The, it is the change in y over the change in x. So it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is the formula. So you require two points. Again, that's not how we're going to do it. Well, it's kind of how we're going to do it, but we've kind of already done that. Sure. The slope is negative 3. This is going over 1, over 1, over 1, over 1, and down 3, down 3, down 3. So that is, now, it, uh, that only works if these are going over by 1s. In grade nine, sometimes you saw tables where it didn't do that. The table was counting by fives or something. And then you find the change in both and divide. And again, that is just doing the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But doing it in a table, sometimes it looks different. But yeah, that, the, that, this is the change that we just found, the negative three. So the slope is negative three. And so if I could come up with the y-intercept, we actually don't have the x-intercept. I was wrong when I said that. We have the y-intercept. What is it? Kyler? Two. It's two. We can just read it off the table. And for this, the tables will all, are all set up to give you the information you need. So if the table didn't have that on it, you could still do it. You would have to do some extra work. If it wasn't linear, that extra work would be hard, or harder at least. But you'll always have that. Okay? Why is it two? Because the y-intercept occurs when x is equal to 0. So the table will always have x equals 0 on it, and b is 2. And we're supposed to determine the equation. Therefore, y equals negative 3x plus 2. Now that's the grade 9 way. It doesn't scale up to other degrees very well. Linear functions are simple because all you need is slope and y-intercept, but like quadratics don't have that same, or cubics or anything, don't have that same simple sort of properties to define the equation. So there's sort of another way that we can do it. Or another way we can think about it, I should say. 
If first differences are the same, we have linear. And for linear, it's y equals mx plus b is the general form of the equation. And if I do this with the general form, I'm going to do the same thing. The table says x is 0. So what do I do with that 0 in the equation? I can sub it in, right? So I can go m times 0 plus b. Is that what that means? It's not familiar to do this without numbers, with letters, but it's the same thing. Subbing 0 in for x in this general form is the same as subbing 0 in for x if I had the actual equation and it was 2x plus 3 or something like that, right? You can still do that. What does this work out to? m times 0 is 0, thank you, plus b is b. So this is b. m times 1 plus b, m times 2 plus b, m times 3 plus b. Right? If I just keep subbing in. So the next one, m times 1 plus b, will be what? m plus b. m times 1 is m, so m plus b. m times 2 plus b? Go ahead. Good. 2m plus b? I just get the sense from people's eyes that, like, they think they know the answer, but they're just, uh, this is a little weird, and it's still early in the year, and not, don't quite have the confidence to answer. But, yeah, I, if, if you were thinking that, then you're right. And it just continues. 3m plus b? There's nothing magic about this. This is just straightforward algebra, right? This is relatively simple algebra for us, I think, at this point in grade 12. Now, how do I do the first differences? So how did you get that? Yeah, very nice. So it's the same way you were thinking about it, the same way we did the other one. It's just, I'm just looking at the numbers. They're going down three. This is going up by an M every single time. Very good. So it is going to work out that way. We could do it. And if the numbers were bigger, if it wasn't as obvious, which it kind of, that, I think that's probably going to happen. We could do it uh, the way we were doing it before, which would be M plus B minus B. So again, subtracting up. And M plus B minus B. B minus B is gone, so it's M. Then 2M plus B minus, careful bracket, M plus B. So that's going to end up being B minus B, which again is gone, and 2M minus 1M is M. And finally, 3m plus b minus 2m plus b. Same thing works out to m. Which had better happen that the first differences are all the same because this is a linear relation. We started with a linear relation. We built the table from the equation of the, of the general equation of a linear relation. It would better have worked out that way. But what, is it, what does it also tell us? That the first difference is, as long as the x's are counting by ones, counting up by ones, it tells us that the first difference is m. What is m? m is the slope. m is the m that we were looking for to write the equation. And where's b? Well, b is right there beside x equals 0. So from this table, I can get my m and my b. And we just, we made sense of it because we already did that in grade 9. And for linear, it's kind of easy. But for the other degrees, it's not as straightforward. So I can read the information I need off of the table. And that's what this is all about. Okay?
Is that, that, this is on uh, page two. We're going to do another one. One to two is up one. Two to seven is up five. You don't have to write the plus, but I do because I want to make sure I'm thinking about direction. So I, I do write it when I'm doing first differences or finite differences. It would not be wrong. You can always write positive numbers without the plus. 7 to 16 is up 9. And if you get to a point where you can't do this in your head, you get your calculator out. And you go 29 minus 16. Do the work on your calculator. So that, but that should be up 13. And then 29 to 46 is up 17. Anybody see the pattern? What's the pattern? Tyler? Um, the M adds by four each time. Yeah, we won't call it M. It's first differences, but it's going up by four every time. So there's a pattern. Patterns in, first, in finite differences tells us something, but the patterns can be different. If they're not the same, it, it's telling us that there's a pattern, there's a relationship happening here, but it doesn't tell us what it is. So when I am doing this and it's not the same, I keep going. And that's why there's, it's kind of gives it away on the handout because there's another column, right? So you kind of think, well, it's probably there for a reason. When you're doing this work, you won't know. So you got to keep going. One to five is up four. Five to nine is up four, nine to 13 is up four, 13 to 17 is up four. And when you, and you keep doing this over and over and over again until they're all the same. And that's when you know you're done with the table. Now we're gonna move to do the rest of the work. Does that make sense? If I was doing this and I had like three of these four and then the next one's five, I'd be like, I wouldn't be like, oh, that's weird. Okay, I'll just keep going. I'd be like, no, I probably made a mistake, <laughs> right? And it, they should all be four. Does that make sense? So there's a nice little check in there. What do you think it means when second differences are the same? Linear. Say again? Linear. It's not linear because linear is when first differences are the same. Vanessa? Quadratic. It's quadratic, it's degree two. And that lines up with everyone. So third differences would mean it's degree three. Fourth differences would mean it's degree four. Fifth differences would mean it's degree five and so on, right? Makes sense? So since uh, second differences are all equal This function is quadratic. Again, it did say in the question, state the degree. So just to make sure on an assessment that I'm satisfying the instructions, I'm gonna say degree equals two. I'm not gonna even just leave it at quadratic. How do we write the equation? There's no slope in quadratics in, on, from, for parabola. We don't have y equals mx plus b. We have other forms of quadratic equations. Vertex form, factored form, but like the a value and the the H and the K or whatever letters you use in grade 10 and grade 11, they're not in here. So how do we do it? And this is why um, we need these tables in order to do this.
And these tables that we're going to use are from the general form. So for quadratic, we're going to use y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You're not going to have to develop these tables for a test, for an assessment. Okay? You don't have to make the table. You have to know how to use the table. I'm going to give you the table. I've got all of them photocopied right here. I've got a whole class set of tables. So when we do the test, I'm going to hand it to you, and it'll be pre-filled out. The one that you're going to use for your homework is online. We'll look at it momentarily. So I'm going to go through this one a little bit more quickly, just to save us some time. Okay? Um, but it's the same concept. The idea is I take the x, I sub it into this equation. What would happen when I put 0 in for x? Well, a times 0 squared is going to be gone. b times 0 is going to be gone, and I would just be left with c. Yes? Can you follow that okay? What would happen if I put 1 in? 1 squared is 1, so I would have a, 1a. B times 1 is B, so plus B plus C. What about 2? 2 squared is 4, so I would have 4A plus 2B plus C. 3 squared is 9, so 9A plus 3B plus C. A plus B plus C minus C is? A plus B. Were people thinking that? Like, are you following this? Are you able to? It's okay, yeah. So A plus B. 4A plus 2B plus C minus A plus B plus C. So I'm just subtracting a, like terms with each other. So 4A minus A is 3A. 2B minus B is B. C minus C is gone. 9 minus 4 is 5, so 5a plus b, c is gone. 3 and not the same, so we got to keep going. Is this weird a little bit, kind of? It's a bit different, isn't it? Um, 3a plus b minus a plus b, b minus b is gone. 3a minus a is 2a. Same thing, 5a minus 3a is 2a, the b's are gone. And look at that. Second differences are the same. Makes sense. We started with the general form of a quadratic equation. Right? Now, how does this help us find our Equation above. Anybody have an insight into that? What can I do? If you did this all again, you would get the same thing, right? Like, we didn't make any choices throughout this process. We just used ax squared plus bx plus c, and we just did, followed math rules. So this table is, like, just correct. So if the second difference is, is 2a, a being that a, the second difference is, is 2a, how does that help? Oh, you got to go? Yep, that's fine. Brando. Uh, you got it. That means 2A for this relation is 4. So if I want to find A, I do 2A equals 4 
Divide both sides by 2, and a is 2. Well, I found my a value. Now what can I do? What else do I need to write the equation? See ya. I need B and C, right? And then I can write the equation. Well, now I know A. So could I use one of those to find B? And why not use the, easier, the top one? Because it's going to be easiest. So A plus B equals that. Because those rows correspond to each other. They line up with each other. So if I want to find B, I've got A plus B, in this case, equals 1. But I know what A is, so I sub it in. Subtract 2 from both sides, and B is negative 1. Is that fit for people? Is that okay? And what about C? C is the constant. Constant is all in expanded form is always the y-intercept. And in our table, it's right there. C. There's C. Right? So we can just pick that off the table because we've got it. It's 1. So that one's always trivial. Therefore y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is 2, b is negative 1, c is 1. OK, I'm going to show you the sheet that's online. It's already filled out for you. There's, for linear, degree 1. There's for quadratic degree two, notice it's the same as one we just did, right? So take a look for degree three. Degree three, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d has third differences equal. So it's more work when you get up to degree three and degree four. You would start with six a to find a, sub that in to find b, Sub both of those in to find C, and then D is just your y-intercept. And take a look at degree 4. Woo! See, numbers get big. So you start with A and track back. Any questions about that? That is found in the Google Classroom. You can print it out if you like. What I would do is I would go to the worksheet, copy the table into my notes, and then flip over to the to the to this sheet and have that up on your phone or your device or whatever to, to reference. First step is you got to figure out what the degree is. And remember, you do that by just keep on doing finite differences, first differences, second, third, fourth. We're never going to go above degree four. Okay, so you go up to fourth. Fourth, when you get there and you see the fourth differences are all equal, you know it's degree four, you would use this table, because this is the degree four table, you would use this table to do the rest of the solving. And your job would be to find A, B, C, D, and E in that case. So there's a lot more subbing back in. Any questions? Very different from what we were doing, right? Not really related. I mean, these are still polynomial functions, but this is not talking not like anything that we've been talking about. Okay, we do actually have another one or two to do together. So um, the table's already done for you. For both of them? Yeah. To save us some time, I'm going to encourage you to try it on your own. Maybe we'll 
do start, maybe we'll do some of the first one together. And then I'll let you do some of it. And then for the fourth one, I'm going to let you kind of do it on your own. And we'll either take it up or I'll put the answers up or you can find them online. So if we, get, if we do this one, you would just be given these on a test, right? And you would have to do all this work and you wouldn't know which one's going to be. You could see quickly that it's not linear. And you might have a hunch that it's not degree two as well, but you wouldn't know until you get going. So you just keep doing it until you get to a point where they're all the same. And as I said, if you have two the same and one different, maybe you've made a mistake, I would check my math. Um, but that's, what, that's how you do it. And we get to third differences. Therefore, degree is three. So what do I do next? I go over to the sheet and I find degree three. And degree three tells me 6a is equal to that value that's the same. So to find a, we do 6a equals six. Solve that equation, a is one. Stop me if anybody's neat, like not quite following, right? That's the whole point of this. I can't find C yet because C requires A and B and I only have A, so I gotta find B first, but I can use that to find B because I know what A is. It's the same A throughout this whole question, right? So whoops, what did that say? It says 6A plus 2B So to find B, 6A plus 2B equals 6. This only works, like the tables have to line up perfectly. So you will notice every question starts with zero and goes up by ones. And that's what this does. Starts at zero and goes up by ones. So this only works because the tables are perfectly lined up. It's not really a, a, a valuable, like useful, versatile procedure. You know what I mean? Okay, so sub in for A, which is one. Subtract six from both sides. Divide by two. Get B is zero. Can B be zero? Or did we do something wrong? Sure, B can be zero, why not? It's a number. No reason why it can't be zero. Okay, C. Back over to my sheet. I could use any of these, but why wouldn't I just use the easy one? So it's A plus B plus C. It's a little tricky now when you have the paper in front of you like and you know I'm flipping back and forth so I think that makes it harder but you you want to make sure you get the right thing so if I said equals 6 that's going to be wrong it's that's for the that was for the first differences so just you know make sure that you're not rushing through it too much A is 1 B is 0 so subtract one from both sides, I got C equals four. And D, again, I can look at this sheet to get D, but I kind of always know the last one is the y-intercept, it's where x is zero, so D is negative five. plus zero x squared plus four x minus five, which is a weird way of writing it. A x, that's not what I meant to do. X cubed. We'd usually write it like that. This was one x cubed.
So again, you don't have to build the tables. Tables are given to you, pre-completed with everything that you need. You just need to know how to use them. So again, as I said, there's one more here. It's already done for you. It's a, in, in past years, I, we would do this together, but it takes so long, it really drags the lesson out. So that's why I've done this for us to speed up the lesson. So I forgot that I had done that. Anyway, so, but I'm still gonna, like, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna freeze my screen. And I'm gonna suggest that you try this one on your own. And um, we'll, if we have a chance, we'll take it up together. I'll put the answers up or you can ask about it, but it, it is all online. Yeah. Okay, and there's your answer to that final example.